Hey, how you doing? I'm Van, and this is the only channel on YouTube that God will smite you for subscribing to. Welcome back! Welcome back to part two of the six-part series on Captain Planet, or more specifically, the worst episodes of Captain Planet. For those that are missing the first part, I'm taking the worst episode as rated by IMDb off of every season of Captain Planet, and I'm watching them because I have nothing better to do with my time at 2 o'clock in the morning, apparently. I could be sleeping, I have work in the morning, but... This is part two of a six-part series. If you haven't watched part one, you can watch it back there. Everybody, please subscribe. The Captain Planet video previous to this one actually did surprisingly well. But yeah, let's continue with this garbage. The episode that we're going to be covering today is season two, episode 20, A Twist of Fate. Just out the gate, I know this isn't much to immediately start commenting on. This is literally the first scene of the episode. But I want to go ahead and address the big plot point of this entire episode. And that plot point is that for no reason whatsoever, Wheeler has decided that he hates poor people. Great. Nothing but unemployed people. Did you get anything? Yeah, I got the creeps. I never saw so many poor people. Why don't they get real jobs and get off the street? Like, oh my god, he's a Republican, you know? Like, what? You would be lost without me! <sighs> and then he accidentally trips on the leg of this really maybe homeless man. We'd never really get an answer for who he is or what he stands for. But, like, what? what is with Wheeler in this episode? Like, what, what happened between season one and season two? What trauma has occurred to Wheeler to to turn him into a into into this. I would like to go ahead and compliment the episode for what I can compliment it for. Basically everything from a production standpoint has improved tremendously from the previous episode. Bob, do you mind? But basically everything has improved from the previous episode. I of course don't mean the previous episode is in the last episode of the season, I mean the last episode that I watched, which looked like it had been animated in about a day and a half, and nobody really knew what they were doing. This one was at least more competently put together, and even the audio is mixed a little bit better, the voice actors seem like they're doing a slightly better job, and in general, it just... They're doing a little bit better. I'm proud of them. The dick guys aren't doing so bad this go-round. And because he's mean to this particular person, Gaia decides to fuck with him. It's never directly stated that Gaia is the one who actually puts Wheeler through this, but she literally says the phrase, Except for a twist of fate, you might be in the shoes of that man you stumbled over. And then immediately, instantly, the moment she's done, there's an earthquake. And she's just like, oh, well, you know, it wasn't me, but also there's an earthquake. Go check it out. You should go see what's going on. Nothing bad's gonna happen to you, Wheeler. No. After she says the phrase, were it not for a twist of fate, you might find yourself in his shoes. Do you even need to watch the rest of the episode? No. No, I didn't think so either. Just making sure, just making sure we were on the same page here. They arrive in a small farming village located in Santa Teresa, and when they do, they play their dime store Indiana Jones music. Oh. And begin helping people. Oh, oh, oh my god, she used her rings. Like, she actually used her magical power. Covered. They just didn't do that a lot of the time for some reason. Probably, like, budgeting reasons, like budget constraints, but... It was still noticeably like, use your magic powers. At least here they're doing it, you know? Gotta give them props for that one. They've grown as people. In a similar vein, I'm incredibly proud of Kwame for actually doing something in this episode. I think when he said Earth just then, that was literally them taking his scene from Captain Planet, like when they're... Within, I think, two minutes of them arriving on the scene of this earthquake, He's alive. Wheeler has been knocked out by a wall of bricks He's falling alive. on top of him. He is then kidnapped by a Latino body, couple, and then, after both of those, he hospital, wakes up with city. amnesia and no memory recollection or anything of who he is or how he got there. He just knows he's Wheeler. What's your name? Link, I have not. Not since the last aftershock. Let me try. Heart, I can sense nothing from Wheeler. 
Also, I didn't actually try, if we're being totally honest. He must be unconscious. Maybe he's trapped somewhere. We'd better look. As if they could just turn around and go back like a few hundred feet and take this boy that they found unconscious in a pile of bricks back the way they came we don't know and this boy, be like, hey, do you recognize this guy? He's wearing the same thing the you guys are. And they'd be like, oh yeah, that's, that's Wheeler. But no, well, instead they case. take him we miles away to see some doctor in a city where everyone's poor and suffering and starving. <laughs> I'm not blaming these people, by the way. They were going to the city in search of work and in search of a better life after the earthquake. They believed that the city was a sanctuary. However, this is all Gaia's doing. Gaia's doing this to Wheeler right now. I just want to make that clear. That's all that I- that's- that's it. That's all. How do they know to look there? Like, that's exactly where he was. That's 100% where he was. It's like Linka can smell him. Can you hear me? Wheeler! What? Who said that? He has pain and sickness. Biddle? Biddle? Wheeler! Who are you? What do you want? That one is delirious! Put the straight jacket on him! Oh my fucking god, they were locked and loaded with that thing, weren't they? Like, she pressed the button and they were like, straight jacket! Like, they waited for this moment. They've been sitting there in a dark room smoking cigarettes for 16 years, waiting for the time that the straight jacket button is pressed. This is, this is their, this is their moment. No thanks, guys! I don't wear white jackets! A bit too straight for me! <laughs> A 2024 Captain Planet reboot would absolutely have somebody that was gay on there. They'd have a couple. Well, not like a couple, not like a gay couple. Well, there might be a gay couple. Really, they could all be a polycule. That'd be interesting. Good. I lost him. I'm lost too. Lost again, Wheeler? Who are you? I don't remember anything since I hit my head. What was it you called me? Wheeler. That is a bad wound. Like, I get that she's mad at him, but don't call the man ugly. He doesn't even have memories. He's just gonna trust you. He's gonna go through life thinking he's a- he's a- he's a plum now. <laughs> What's your name? Teresa? That's her butt. Her butt doesn't talk, Wheeler. Her mouth talks. At this point in the story, Wheeler has been taken to the city. Back where they were earlier at the beginning of the episode. He's mistaken for a crazy person gets away, and hangs out with this girl for a little while, while they walk around and Wait, steal things and do yard. stuff and be street rats, essentially, for a bit. At last, we made enough money to eat. That is the most relatable thing I've ever heard in an episode of anything in a very long time. Aw, oh, come on, Wheeler, you learn how to make money and- Ooh! Give us your money! I really like this quick like one to two second scene right here of the guy mugging her and her immediately handing him the money no questions asked so for one it's animated way better than most of the rest of the episode as well like they put a few extra dollars into this scene for some reason there's extra shading there's extra line work like it's a little choppy in a lot of places but it looks better but the interaction to me also tells kind of a story as well because teresa immediately drops every bit of money that she had into his hand without a second thought. And she does this in a way that implicates that she's been through this process before and would rather go ahead and pay this goon some cash than be stabbed or beaten or thrown into a ditch or ran over or clubbed. You get it. It was probably due to budget constraints that they had to cut the scene short, but I like to think it was a storytelling reason. Holy shit, did they kill Wheeler? You better back off or you're gonna be playing with fire! Let's get out of here! Bubbles, run! Oh right, yeah, fuck Wheeler, you can do that. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Oh my god. Wheeler has used his ring. That way! Hart can do that? I just wish you could get us some food. Offer that man your ring for some of his- food. Also, I Offer didn't actually try if we're The magical totally fireball ring to the merchant for some fruit. 
Why is she arching like that, though? These fire traps ought to be condemned. Okay, so first of all, no. That's not how that works. Well, it would be if there was dry hay all the way around an indoor fire in a hot, arid area where tons of people lived and were tightly packed together. Yes, that would be how that worked. People don't do that. It's like being one of the three little pigs and building your house out of steak. You know, it's just asking for trouble. Can we roll that back? A baby! The tenderness in his voice, like what? He's so genuinely, like, concerned. That's such a heartfelt delivery on there. Teresa! Are you alright? Wheeler! There's no way out! I can't get through! I'll get help! Fred needs help! She's trapped on that burning hillside! You! <laughs> hey! He's the firebug! How big is this city? How many people live in this city? How, how, how many individuals happen to be here? Because those are exactly the three people uh, that were quote-unquote wronged by, by these two. And one of which I want to point out was mugging them. <laughs> like, they still got the money, too. Like, what? Get out of my head! Get out! Get out! He's loco and a pyromaniac! Get him! What raw, unfiltered action this show is. Why didn't he do that when he, they were getting mugged, by the way? Like, you'd think to protect somebody, you might judo throw a mugger. Amigo. How big is this city? Try to smother the fire with Earth. Run. Heart. There's a bunch of dying children and animals, but we don't have to save them because they're not plot relevant. He would not need these shoes anymore, but I think they will fit our unlucky young friend. Except for a twist of fate, you might be in the shoes of that man you stumbled over. Oh, I'm in his shoes. That's the lesson. <laughs> Thanks, Gaia. Remember now, I'm a planeteer! And Teresa, she's stuck in that fire! I've gotta help! <gasps> Amigo, wait! You have several concussions! Andale, muchachos! Just, just for the record, by the way, they don't help. They disappear entirely as soon as this scene just, like, goes away. Like, we never see any of them again. I, I assume they burn to death in the fire. You beautiful. We gotta put out that fire and save the girl who saved my life. <coughs> Goodbye, Wheeler. Like, doesn't she have like a cat or something? Like, she's known Wheeler for a day. Like a day and an hour, if you count earlier in the episode. I get that she's supposed to have a sad life, but if Wheeler's the only bright point in it, I I I don't I don't firmly believe anybody could survive that kind of torment. It's time to let our powers combine. Every time Captain Planet appears, I do a total 180 on my opinion of the show. Uh oh, she's in a real hot spot. Oh. Now to see about this fire, I think I see a way to beat the heat. I'm just gonna have to be this city's main man. It's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> Captain Planet's a cool guy. I think you are making the right decision to go back to the land. Uh, we still have no doctor. 
If only we had someone like Teresa in our village. Well, why don't you ask her? Me? Go live with them? Yes. Our house is small, but you always have food to eat. And what about you people? We need a mechanic, a plumber, a teacher. Our village could support you all. I can't believe it. It's like a miracle. Don't ask me what's going on. I had amnesia, remember? I just want you to know, by the way, that moving to a small town away from the big city also doesn't work out every single time you do it. Also, the village was destroyed by an earthquake. Generally speaking, the lesson here is that poverty compounds difficulty and it compounds hardship. When you suffer due to poverty, you don't just suffer from the poverty. You also suffer from the effects of the poverty reaching out and ruining other parts of your life, causing you to spiral and tumble down a dark hole of misery, I guess. Even if you think you personally can never be in that situation because you're better than them somehow, it could still happen. You don't know everyone's story. Alright, that was episode two. That was the second of the worst episodes in all of Captain Planet. I like this one a little bit more than the other one, but the, the synth soundtrack went a little less hard this go-around. I'm not gonna lie. It was overall better, I think. Um, but comparing a turd to a shinier turd is still, it's still turds. But yeah, y'all have a great rest of your night.